It's a political year like few others we've seen in recent history or ever. And it's looking very likely that two people with extremely low likability ratings, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, are going to win the nominations for the Democratic and Republican parties. The nationally syndicated radio host, New York Times best-selling author, Larry Elder, joins me in studio. He's gone on record as saying Donald Trump isn't his first choice to vote for anymore than were the Republican Party's previous nominees in 2008 and 2012. He will support Trump until the bitter end of this controversial primary fight. That's a question we'll ask. Let's get it. Will you support him? Oh, yeah, of course. I I'm an ABC guy. Anybody but Clinton. Uh, why? I why? Since she's the has the best resume ever to run for president. Can you name a better resume? Well, she's done a lot of stuff. So what? I care about her policies and more taxing, more spending. What she really is running for is a third term of Obama. And most people feel that the Obama administration is on, is on the wrong track economically and on the wrong track in terms of foreign policy. She's offered no criticism, even a minor criticism of, of Obama. So why would I support her? OK. But Obama's up in popularity now. 51 percent. At this time... As uh, opposed to the Congress, which is 21 percent. Congress isn't running for president, but uh, at, at this time of his term, second term, Bill Clinton was almost at 70 percent. Most people are economically anxious, which is why Bernie Sanders has, has his supporters and why Donald Trump has their supporters. I think there's a lot of overlap. A lot of people are upset about the economy. This is the worst economic recovery in most people's living memory. Uh, Obama will be the first president, Larry, to preside over a recovery where not one year have we had 3 percent GDP. Now, that might sound not... May, may not sound like a lot, but Obama's uh, recovery has been 2 percent GDP. 1 percent translates into a million jobs times each year of the recovery. So if this had just been a normal recovery, we'd be talking about 7 million more jobs. But how come, I mean, we, well, I hear this, I hear all the figures. Mm -hmm. How come uh, Hillary, Hillary's favored? Well, a new poll just came out literally today, a Bloom, uh, a Rasmussen poll, uh, and Donald Trump's is at, uh, is 2 percent ahead. There was also a poll last week, a George Washington University poll, and Hillary was just 3 percent ahead. That's right in the margin of error. So I believe that this race is going to change and Donald Trump's negatives are going to go down. I think Hillary's are going to go up. Why would they go down? Uh, I think as Donald Trump focuses on Hillary and talks about some of the things she's and done. attacks women. Well, <laughs> and makes it, or, or supposing he gets really rough, right. hitting a woman who uh, certainly people may not, may, not, may not like things about her, but she's not a bad person. I don't think either one of them is a bad person. That's not the point. The point is that Hillary has been legitimately accused of trashing the women who've made allegations against her husband. Her husband's not on the ballot, but for a woman, Hillary, to say that women, when they make sexual abuse allegations should be believed uh, for her to, in my opinion, hire the private detectives and lawyers to uh, sick, dig up dirt on Paula Jones and Monica Lewinsky uh, and, yes, and Kathleen like Willey. Woman, and when that's you, a woman hurt. Say again? That's a woman who is hurt is going to do that. A, a woman who purports to say, vote for me because I'm a woman, I'm a feminist, I put all these cracks in the glass ceiling. And when women have made allegations against her husband, what does she do? She trashed the women. There are two really good books. One is called uh, Hell to Pay by Barbara Olson. Another one is called No One Left to Lie to by Christopher Hitchens. And both of them talk about how Hillary has been behind the so-called nuts or slut strategy, and that is to malign the women as either crazy or horny. All that stuff's going to come out. I know them both very well. Barbara passed away, of She course, did. Died in 9-11. 9-11. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, what do you make of Trump? Come on. You, well, you, you, when you, it started, don't tell me. <laughs> He was your favorite. In the he was not. He most, most certainly was not. Who was your favorite early on? Probably Scott Walker. I thought Scott Walker had the best resume in the sense that he was the governor of a blue state and had uh, given, fought off the union, fought off a recall election. He talked the talk and walked the walk. I thought he was probably going to be the nominee. He got smoked real early. But Donald Trump, as, as you pointed out in the opening, I consider him to be the good, the bad, and the ugly. The ugly is accusing George W. Bush of lying in the Iraq war. The bad is this anti-trade stuff. The good is what he'll do about, the, about borders. I don't think he'll build a wall. I don't think uh, 11 million people will be shipped out of the country, but I think he'll do something about securing the borders, stopping catch and release, stopping sanctuary cities, and maybe we'll have a debate about whether or not if you are in the country illegally and you have a baby on American soil, that baby is an, is an American citizen. We should have a debate about that. Uh, we also should have a debate if you're born in a foreign country. What do we mean as the Supreme Court has never ruled on natural born? That's true. Right? We do they've have been, never they, had a ruling. That's true. They've been so vague about that. So you could debate about Cruz. Sure. 
right? Right. You know, can't have it both ways, Larry. Have the debate. Uh, I think that Cruz will, if he were to be the nominee, the Supreme Court would rule in his favor, but let's have the debate, sure. It, it would be a tough guess uh, as whether they were ruled. Mm. I'm not sure our old friend who recently passed away would have ruled that natural born doesn't mean born in America. Uh, it's, it's a good question, uh, although hardly relevant right now since Cruz is not going to be the nominee. All right. Don't you have worries if Trump were in the White House of, of an unfettered, let loose wild man? I have a, a more concern about Hillary in the White House. The problem with Donald Trump is you don't know what you're going to get. The problem with Hillary is that you do. Uh, you're going to get more Supreme Court justices in the mold of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, Hillary signed on to this crazy Iran deal, in my opinion. We're going to continue this march towards single payer and health care. Uh, rich people are going to be taxed even higher. There'll be more regulations. We'll be still fighting this uh, so-called uh, threat of, of global warming. So those are the kinds of things I think damage the country. That's what she'll pursue. I don't want her there. Why aren't you a cruise man? Um, I don't think Cruz can be elected. Uh, uh, if he's the last person standing, of course, I'll support him. Here's the dirty little secret that people on the right don't want to concede. The country is center-left. It's not center-right. Somebody like Cruz who wants to eliminate the IRS, dramatically reduce the size of government, all the kinds of things that I would want to do are too radical for the American people. You agree with those things? I do. <laughs> I, and that's why I'm not running. I wouldn't carry very many states. The country has gotten more and more left wing. You've got even John Cornyn from Texas, a conservative, saying that the part of Obamacare that he likes is forcing insurance carriers to take on people with pre existing illnesses. Now, that turns the whole concept of insurance on its head. But you have a conservative saying that. And during this primary, three of these guys supported a higher minimum wage. John Kasich, who's done so in, in Ohio, uh, Ben Carson, and even Rick Santorum all support a higher minimum wage. Uh, in the whole eight years Ronald Reagan was president, he never raised the minimum wage. So this is a, a whole country that's shifted to the left, including the Republican Party. And somebody like Ted Cruz, in my opinion, is probably not going to be electable were he to be the last person standing. Well, don't you if, you, if you look at the country, countries and so left, do you ever say to yourself, we should have health for everyone? Sure, I do. And the Don't best, you think we should have? Absolutely. And the best way to do, to do that, health care is a commodity like anything else, like an egg, like a movie. If you have more competition, you'll have more accessibility, you'll lower the prices. Health care is one of the most heavily regulated businesses that we have, which is why health care is so expensive. If we wanted health care to be less expensive, we should have more competition, not less competition. That scares people. All right. Trump has declared himself a very much a unifier. Right. And while he's called for GOP unity, he also said he can win without it. And he's not a big fan of the hierarchy of the Republican Party. Right. Where's his base? His base will, will, will consolidate once he's the last person standing, Larry. All these Republicans that say, I won't vote for Donald Trump if he's the last person standing, will get in line. John Boehner won't. I think he will. I think he will. I think <laughs> vote that... Vote for Lucifer. Uh, well, Jeb Bush even said that um, uh, he would not vote for Donald Trump. But then when he was asked, would you vote for Hillary, he went, oh, no, 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 no. So then he wouldn't the, vote. So if that's how you feel about Hillary, uh, why would you not vote in order to enhance the chances of Hillary winning? And for every person that feels that, that he is not going to vote for Trump, I think there's somebody on the Bernie Sanders side that feels he or she will not vote for Hillary. What did you think of Bernie Sanders? He's against everything you stand for. He sure is. Um, I thought he was a. Uh, I think he's done far better than he thought he was going to do. And if As he, is Trump. And if well, he really wanted to win, Larry, he shouldn't have taken the email situation off the table. During that debate when he said, enough with the damn emails. Pretty good impression, right? Yeah. Enough with the damn emails. As far as I was concerned, that was him saying, I really don't expect to win. I am here as a message guy. I want to move the party further to the left, but I don't think I'm going to win. How do you explain Trump? I no, think it is a phenomenon. It is a phenomenon. I think people are very upset about this economy. I think people are very upset about what they perceive to be porous borders, uh, porous borders by design. I think that people feel that big business doesn't want the borders secured because they want cheap labor. Democrats don't want the borders uh, secured because they want future Democrats. And I think people are upset about that. Do you believe Trump is a true conservative? No. Trump is an economic populist. Uh, he's got a concoction of views, some of which are even contradictory. but. Add them all up. He's kind of in the center of this country, which is where this country is. Country is center left. He's got a left wing view about trade, the same view that Bernie Sanders has. Uh, he is, however, 
conservative about borders. I've always thought, by the way, about borders. Why should that be a, a partisan issue? It seems to me everybody should be in favor of secure borders. Everybody should be in favor of not making, not allowing people to come into the country illegally. But somehow that's become a conservative issue. So he's Trump. He's conservative on on borders, but on virtually everything else, uh, he's pretty moderate. Hi, so are you optimistic about where this country is going? You you, I'm, you I'm, don't appear to be. I, I'm cautiously pessimistic about where the country is going. Uh, the debt really concerns me. The country is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, spending way too much money. Uh, the social services are on automatic pilot. They're unsustainable. Even Obama has said that. Uh, and I'm concerned about our failure to deal with Iran. I think Iran is the number one threat in the world. Uh, it's on a path to getting a nuclear weapon, and we have, in my opinion, accelerated that process. Do you uh, do you think that the Iraq war was a mistake and that it caused ISIS? No and no. Uh, the Iraq war was not a mistake. Well, what the mistake was... Where were the weapons of mass destruction? Um, the intelligence was wrong. Uh, the then the war was wrong. No. Um, if you look at the resolutions that were signed by both the House and the, and the, uh, and the Senate, there were all sorts of reasons for the war, one of which was uh, that um, he was violating a bunch of different uh, United Nations resolutions, one of which was he was stealing from the Oil for Food program, one of which was he was shooting at the British and American planes patrolling the southern and no-fly zones, another one was he was giving 25 grand to families of homicide bombers in Israel. He had tried to assassinate the first President Bush, um, and he had used chemical weapons on his own people and on the Iranians. For all those reasons, we went to war. Um, and even uh, polls showed at one time when the war was going well, even if we don't find the stockpiles, most people still believe the war was a good idea. We supported him against Iran. We did. Well, we supported Stalin. How about the old, our bad guy is better than your bad guy? We supported our bad guy. We supported a lot of people in the past. Uh, there's something called blowback, and, and things change. Uh, but the real mistake regarding the Iraq war was Obama in 2012, in de 2011 in December, standing up there saying that uh, Iraq is now sovereign, safe, and self-reliant, and pulled out all the troops over the objection of a CIA director, over the objection of his ambassador to Iraq, over the objection of the Joint Chiefs, over the objections of Hillary, uh, who was his secretary of state. Well, Hillary's a hawk. She's more hawkish than she's, Trump. She's more hawk, hawk, hawkish than, than Obama. I don't think she's more hawkish than Trump. Some people say so. But uh, also Obama ignored the recommendation of his then Secretary of Defense, Panetta, and ignored the recommendation of his former Secretary of Defense, Gates. But he saved lives. More, didn't he? Well, one more thing. And uh, Ray Odierno, who is his retiring Army Joint Chief, said that had we left the stay behind force, he feels that ISIS could have been dealt with. So it was a huge mistake pulling ISIS out, which Obama called JV at one time. The black vote is going to stay Democratic? Unfortunately, it will. Uh, but I, my suspicion is Donald Trump could shave into that to the tune of maybe 25 percent. Why? Because of, of immigration. A lot of people, especially inner city people, are losing jobs or having their raises uh, lower because of illegal immigration. I'm interested in your thoughts on, on one thing interesting, the radio TV correspondence dinner, the White House correspondence dinner. Right. Uh, a lot of people criticize it, saying that it's an example of the mainstream media and political power players being too cozy. In fact, the New York Times does not attend mm. that event, has not attended the last five. Right. What do you think? I agree with that assess assessment. I think that the media is um, leaning over backwards to appease uh, the left. I think Obama's gotten a huge pass. Obama has been more anti-media than probably any president, according to members of the media. He's uh, brought more lawsuits against uh, journalists. Uh, he's given them less access. And here they are kissing his butt at this White House Correspondents' Dinner. I think it's unseemly. Their job is to be the watchdog of the government, and then they put on tuxes and sit there and, and drink booze with them. Uh, I think it's unseemly. I think the New York Times has made the right decision in not going. Uh, even though Obama's very funny and it's good. He was funny. People he was like very, Bush very, was funny. Too. Yeah, he's very funny. It's, it's, it's a good time. I, I've, I've gone to that dinner before. I was invited by the Washington Times once when Bill Clinton spoke. He was funny, too. But uh, if your job is to cover the, the, the media and to ask tough questions, ask tough questions and you don't do it, part of it is because you guys like each other, you hang out with each other, and it's hard to go after people who are your friends. Okay, the North Carolina bathroom law. Mm -hmm. First, what do you think of it? And second, what do you think of uh, Kurt Schilling being fired because of having an opinion openly about it? 
the law, all the law says, first of all, it only applies to the public sector. And all it says, if your birth certificate says you're a man, you must use a men's bathroom. If it says you're a woman, you have to use a woman's bathroom. If you have a sex change operation, change your birth certificate, and then you can use whatever bathroom it says. Period. It has nothing to do with the private sector. If Donald Trump wants to let Caitlyn Jenner go to the women's bathroom uh, in North Carolina, he can do so. Why people are all upset about it is beyond me. And all this hypocrisy, ESPN fires Kurt Schilling. However, they hire Ray Lewis, who was charged in a double homicide case uh, and pled guilty to obstruction of justice. That's not a problem. Tony Kornheiser is an analyst for ESPN. He referred to, he compared ISIS uh, to the Tea Party. He didn't get fired. And all these people that are pulling out from, from uh, North Carolina, Cirque du Soleil, they perform in Dubai where homosexuality is illegal. Blue Man Group performs in Singapore where homosexuality is illegal. Uh, PayPal pulled out 400 jobs. Their international headquarters is in Singapore where homosexuality is illegal. So follow the bouncing uh, uh, balls of hypocrisy. Uh, that, that's said. I guess you approve. I don't disapprove of it. I think, I think first of all, we're told that women are, are, that rape on college campuses is rampant. The reason the North Carolina lawmakers say they did this is to make sure some male predator doesn't go into a female bathroom. They're doing it for safety reasons. So if it's true that there's this peril, this epidemic of rape going on around college campuses, it applies to state uh, universities, why shouldn't there be a law saying if you're a guy, you can only go into the guy's bathroom? I don't, I don't have a problem with the law, no. Always good having you, Larry. You too, Larry. Next time we go away, you host again. Okay, will do. Great. Thank you. We thank Larry Elder for coming in today. If you want to keep up Larry's musings, his show, and his latest books, follow him on Twitter, at Larry Elder.